Hey guys, it's Matt with Meat Church. This week, I'm gonna be showing you how to make these delicious country-style pork ribs. Hallelujah. And we're gonna do that using these strips I've cut out of a gorgeous Prey Fresh pork butt. Cue the intro. I'm excited about this one. I'm in Texas, this is a beef state. These aren't real common in Texas, but I was born in Tennessee, a lot of family from Georgia and Alabama, and I ate these as a kid. And honestly, I haven't made these in forever. So I thought we would try to make a couple different flavor profiles and just make it together and figure out what we like. Um, we're gonna make an apple and brown sugar version, and we're gonna make a pineapple habanero version. And we'll taste test them at the end, and and see where we go. But what are these? They're really not ribs. Uh, like I said in the beginning, uh, these are strips that I cut out of a pork butt. Um, they're also sometimes cut out of a pork loin and they have the bone on them. Those are great as well. Uh, but today I'm going with the ones that I grew up on. It's a really cheap cut. You know, it was like $1.49 a pound or something like that. And it's gonna make a really, really tasty meal. So let's get started. I'm going to put a binder on these. I'm gonna put some mustard on because when we made pork when I was when I was younger, you know, there was always yellow mustard to uh, put on the meat and help the seasoning adhere. So of course I'm going only the finest mustard, Food Club. I think I paid 89 cents for this. And you know, don't be afraid to get messy with it. Just put this stuff on here. And by the way, look at that. Uh, look at that marbling in that Prairie Fresh pork butt. So you know it's going to be super super good. I'm excited for lunch today. Like I said, this is going to take me back. All right, let's just, let's just get these slathered up real good so the seasoning can adhere. I always say a, a slather is optional and, and doesn't really affect the flavor profile, so if you don't like mustard, don't be too scared. You could certainly use something like an olive oil uh, or anything you want. Okay, I'm gonna take that glove off since it's really messy. We're gonna season this a couple different ways. I thought we'd use our gospel all purpose on some and, and the voodoo on some others. And full disclosure, I've never tried this with these rubs. So again, we're, uh, we're trying this together and let's see how it turns out. I'm gonna go pretty liberal with this big old thick piece of pork butt, You're not gonna hurt it. Make sure you get it on you know all sides. We're gonna have quite the mess to clean up here when we're done. That's all right. That's the fun in it. This gospel's got a beautiful red color and a good kind of southwestern flavor, so I know those are going to be good. It's great on pork. And now let's go a little different option here. Let's use um, our Holy Voodoo on this other set. This is our number one seasoning. So like I always say, feel free to use whatever you want. You've got a seasoning that's near and dear to your heart. This stuff's often pretty nostalgic. Maybe you grew up on something. Maybe you make something by hand. Um, I make mine by hand. I just put them in a bottle and offer them to you. But use whatever you want. Um, you never stick, you know, don't take recipes too literally. They're just a guide. So use whatever products you want, make your own, buy them, whatever. Those look pretty good. I want to let this seasoning adhere. I'm going to let this meat kind of sweat out so this stuff is fully adhered. Uh, you need to give it at least 15 minutes. I'd love to give it 30 minutes. And for those of you wondering, it wouldn't hurt if you did this the night before. Really let that stuff um, adhere. But I'm going to go get my pit ready. Uh, we're going to roll 300 degrees today, so I'm getting that ready. This wood here, and it's time to get to cooking. See you on a minute. It's a beautiful day here in downtown Waxhatchee. We're at our barbecue supply shop. We're going to cook these today on a Traeger Timberline. As usual, I'm teaching you time and temperature so you can replicate this on whatever type of cooker you have. But you guys can see that the seasoning has adhered, sweat out, whatever you want to call it, it's nice and wet. Um, we're going 300 degrees with hickory. This first step should take hour, hour and a half. I'm just trying to get some smoke and some color on these. And I'm going to go to step two after that, which is we're going to braise it in a really tasty liquid until these babies get tender. So on we go. And I'm going to keep them separate here with our different flavors. So, you know, this is our, this is our gospel. Lots of room here on the timberline. It has three shelves, but I've taken one out 
so that you guys can see a little better here on the camera. This is the Voodoo. Back there. There we go. All right. I think this is going to go hour, hour and a half, and we'll go to stage two. See you in a little bit. All right, guys, while those country style ribs are cooking outside, I'm gonna prepare stage two where I'm gonna braise those country style ribs. So I'm gonna make a kind of a barbecue braise. And this is where you can get creative and you know play with flavor profiles and do whatever you want with whatever liquid you want. But I'm gonna start with some barbecue sauce. Um, use your favorite barbecue sauce. If you go this route, I'm using Meat Mitch Naked. It's a sweet, pretty thick sauce, I love it. And we're gonna make a pineapple habanero so I've got some Jumex pineapple nectar that I'm gonna cut or kind of thin this out with. And I've made a pork butt like this for years that we called a Mexican pork butt. Maybe we'll make a video on that um, a little bit more. So I know this is gonna be good. And then I've diced up some habanero that I'm gonna sprinkle in here for this one. Let's get that mixed up. And then I'm gonna make another one. And we're gonna pour these in just a little half pan that after the country style ribs have the color I'm looking for, we're gonna drop them in this pan with this braised liquid and we're gonna cover it with foil. Uh, this will put a bunch of moisture in it. And it'll actually speed up the cook process and help make those country style ribs more tender than your mother's love, as we like to say. All right, set that one aside. Let's make another one. I'm just gonna use the same sauce. You can see it's pretty thick, but it's great. Like this stuff is super good, really good. Like I said earlier, recipes are personal. Use what you dig, what you like. Now I'm gonna put some Jumex apple in this one. You know, you don't have to make two. I am told y'all we hadn't made these in years and we're doing this together. So we'll find out how this turns out. And if it's not good, oh well. I'm sure it will be though. So let's do, the, let's do some habanero again, maybe a little more. And I'm gonna add some brown sugar. We're going apple and brown sugar on this one. It's not measurements for this. You know, I'm just playing with it. Point is to have liquid, so it's not all that important how much I'm doing. So, you know, we'll have a recipe down in the, uh, in the description section, but as you can see, I'm just kind of eyeballing it here and that's fine. Okay, like I said, we're gonna stir these up. We're gonna pour them in these half pans and we're gonna put the country style ribs in these pans, cover them with foil for the second portion of the cook. In that second portion, we're gonna be taking these to tenderness, which is probably 190, 195. We're gonna pull them out. We're gonna glaze them with a sauce for five minutes, 10 minutes, tack it up, and then we're gonna eat and it's gonna be awesome. All right, guys, we've been cooking about an hour and a half, and look at these. Look at the color. Those look great. We're gonna put them in the braise here. That's what we were looking for, that super good color. These are temping about 170 degrees internal temperature. We're gonna put those in the braise mixture we made. This is the apple and brown sugar mixture. up tight and then we're gonna get our pineapple habanero mix for the other. These are the ones that were seasoned with the holy voodoo. See the smaller ones were getting a little crispy. That's okay. Customers in and out all day. They'll eat good. All right, we're gonna do one more thing here. We're about to go to lunch. We'll go to the bar. So let's put our 
meat probe in. I'm gonna put it right here in one of these thick pieces in the middle. Insert that. And I'm gonna set this to about 200 degrees so I can monitor it from my phone. Um, we're gonna go get some lunch, maybe a beer. And when these get nice and tender, around 195, just under 200, we're gonna bring them in. Uh, we're actually we're gonna glaze them, and then we're gonna taste test them. So we'll see y'all in a little bit. All right, guys, I'm sitting here at the bar, enjoying a mar, monitoring the Traeger from my app. So I'm trying to get those country style ribs to 195, and we're there. I um, actually just hit 196, so I'm gonna hit keep warm which turns the trigger into a warmer to 165 degrees so we can finish our margaritas and then uh, head back and finish up these ribs. Let's go ahead and make our finishing sauce. You can use your same favorite barbecue sauce you did, in our case again, Meat Mitch, naked, but we're gonna kick it up a notch. We're gonna go sauce and we're gonna add some Texas pepper jelly rib candy, which is my favorite barbecue product other than my own. And we're gonna go about two to one uh, sauce uh, to rib candy. So I'm gonna go pineapple habanero uh, in, the, in the one that I cooked with the pineapple nectar. Again, it's about two to one. Thins it out and it's gonna give you a major sweet heat. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here um, with the ones that we had in the apple nectar, but I'm gonna use apple and brown sugar habanero. Don't sweat it if you guys don't have this. Obviously, you know, I like to kind of go crazy with my flavors and, and get unique with stuff. I think it's gonna make an amazing sweet heat, but you don't have to have this stuff. Um, if you don't, you could also add a, a standard pepper jelly that you get out of a jar um, that you could heat up in here. Mix these up, and we're gonna brush this on for the last 10 minutes of the cook. And it's gonna make them nice and pretty and add a little additional um, flair profile level, uh, and it's gonna be great, and it's gonna be time to eat. Remember, we turn this down to 165. Let's pull this probe out. And it's time to get these sauced. Oh man, they look good. They look and smell real good. I'm gonna transfer these to a pan uh, just to keep my grill clean. Any chance I get to keep a grill from getting messy, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna toss these around in this sauce. These are the ones in the apple juice. Honestly, these would be great just like this. We could tack this stuff up, but you know, we've just built another sauce, so we're gonna we're gonna use it. Okay, remember we made two sauces. Here's the pineapple habanero. I'm gonna glaze this on. And I'm gonna glaze both sides. Not too much, flip them over. I'm gonna repeat the process on the back side. Ooh, these pieces are tender right here. Oh, wrong one. All right, let's switch to the apple and brown sugar habanero. Tell you what, I'm gonna flip these over to the back side first so I can kind of keep that really pretty uh, caramelized top side. It's been cool shooting a video up here at the shop today. Got lots of customers coming in and, and watching. 
Oh, hey, that's Billy. Oh, don't worry, we're not shooting a video. It's all good. Walks out your fire department. Billy Vest, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, as I was saying, the fire department has us on speed dial, by the way. They know what we do for a living, and they're on strict instructions. If they get an alarm from the meat church, they better get on with it. Plus, they eat good here. So we're going to go back in the Traeger. I'm going to increase the tent back up, uh, up high. We were on keep warm while we were um, over at the bar. We're going to bump it back up to 300 degrees. Could be 275. Y'all don't get too hung up on temperatures just in general when you cook. Somebody gives you a recipe at 275, it's okay to go lower, it's okay to go higher. Just watch your times and watch your sauces. So we're gonna, we're gonna let those ride. I'm gonna crank it up here. We're gonna go 300. Don't wanna go too hot. I should probably go a little lower, but let's keep it consistent today. So we're probably gonna be five, 10 minutes. I'm gonna come check it, and then we're gonna taste test these bad boys. All right, guys, the country style ribs have been cooling off and they look amazing. These are the apple and brown sugar. This is the pineapple habanero. And now it's time for a taste test. And I'm kind of regretting having gone to the bar for a little while because I'm pretty full, but these smell really good. They actually look awesome. So we're going to we're going to dig in here. Um, well, let's just go at it. Ooh, man, that's tender. You know what they say? I ain't mad about it. That's good. Not too hot. It's really good, actually. Um, don't be afraid of the pineapple. That doesn't come through to be too much or anything like that. It's just nice, subtle, sweet heat. All right. Let's try the apple and brown sugar. It's just crazy tender. Well, that's a tough call. Hmm. That's a lot more sweet with all the brown sugar in it. I'm going over here, although they're both really, really good. Recap. Season them, hour and a half in the smoke, 300 degrees. We braised them, I didn't tell you earlier, about an hour or so. Um, we were just under three hours total cook time. This was extremely simple and honestly, extremely cheap. So like I said earlier, make it your own. Um, you know, go with the flavor profiles that you like. Uh, shout out to Prairie Fresh for this super amazing pork because this stuff is really, really good. Anyway, appreciate you guys watching. See you guys next week. Mm -hmm.